Welcome to the iCheckIn podcast with BioAnalyst where we invite key opinion leaders and experts who are working on improving food fortification and nutrition interventions and are trying to turn the world's malnutrition populations into healthier thriving ones because micronutrient deficiencies cost the global economy up to 3.5 trillion US dollars every year. This is your host Maryam and for this episode we have with us Ayo Tella from Technoserve. Currently, she is the country program manager in Nigeria for Technical Assistance Acceleration Program. Ayo has previously worked on strengthening African processors of fortified foods project as well. Thank you very much for being here, Ayo. Thank you, Maryam. Uh, it's my pleasure. So, to start with, uh, would you shed some light on what is the Technical Assistance Acceleration Program and why do we need it and by that i mean to ask what kind of technical support is needed especially in nigeria yeah absolutely so um, the technical assistance accelerator program is an offshoot of what we've done before and that is strengthening african processes of fortified foods uh, where we worked in kenya tanzania and nigeria under the taap as we call it for short uh, we are now expanding to eight countries in Nigeria, we're still in Kenya, we're in Tanzania, we're in Ethiopia, Bangladesh, India, Pakistan. And essentially we want to build a community of practice, of global practice for to drive, you know, uh, food fortification compliance amongst the food processors. So we are putting the food processors here, which is the private sector, at the front and center of supporting the drive towards, you know, eradicating malnutrition to a large extent. And we have within the uh, consortium, uh, we have uh, food processors in these countries, which are the millers and the refiners of the staple foods that are under concentration as edible oil. Uh, with flour and rice. Mm. Uh, and then we, we have also within the initiative, we've got global uh, suppliers of you know, these nutrients, which are known as the premixes or the vitamin and mineral constituents that go into these food staples. Mm. And then we have you know, other uh, ecosystem support players, such as those that provide the analytical equipment like Byron. And so, uh, within the consortium, we've got um, DSM, the Kemi, BSF, Anko, and an evolving, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be evolving, it's going to be increasing in the coming years, but it's essentially a collaborative platform of private sector players to drive food fortification efficiencies. Hmm. So I was wondering why this particular focus on rice fortification, because that has been one of the salient features, let's say, of what you have mm-hmm. been working in. Yeah. Yeah. So specifically in Nigeria, uh, rice is as it is now like uh, drawing the attention from you know the federal government level. Mm-hmm. Before now, rice was not. Uh, included in the food fortification staples, right? Mm -hmm. However, uh, there's more reason to do it now. One may be because uh, in the last couple of years in the country, uh, the federal government, through a lot of uh, schemes, has supported increased, significant increase in local production of rice. Mm -hmm. And it's now industrialized. So, uh, for instance, currently, um, the country produces almost uh, 70% of the rice that is consumed locally, which is about almost 7 million tons of rice. So there's that local uh, efficiency in production mm-hmm. that, can, that can support the food fortification practice. Because for food fortification to be, um, or large scale food fortification to be successful, you need an industrial base. So that's one. And of course, the consumption of rice in Nigeria is also now very high, almost 50 kg per person per year. Okay. So, and yeah, this is even more than, you know, the traditional consumption of the wheat flour and edible. So it's quite high. So there's more than enough reason now to consider rice for fortification, either on a voluntary basis or mandatory basis. So, Mm-hmm. Before those decisions are computized, the TAP wants to 
on board the millers into food production regime. They were never a part of that conversation. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure that they are well aware, they are well uh, versed with what the technology would look like or what the capital would look like. So driving the business case for them to participate in this very valuable course of qualification. Right. So when we talk about the fortification landscape, uh, specifically in Nigeria, what is it that needs to be done on priority basis? Uh, do we need a major shift in policy interventions or do we need to put an effort into niche areas such as providing the millers with, you know, cheaper equipment and premixes? What do you think are the core challenges here to begin with? The, the challenges are, are, are the rule and they're, they're as complex as they are, though, we can take them one at a time. So uh, there are a few areas that can be considered to drive, you know, the further um, success of the, the food fortification. So one, I think, will be what we're trying to do or under the TAP is to put the food producers in the front and the center of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are the ones, the, the government, of course, of countries would, you know, drive the legislation and the enabling environment. However, those that have to actually implement this and make it the, the nutrients available to consumers are the food producers. So they're actually the most important uh, stakeholder mm -hmm. as far as from, yeah, from my own perspective, they are one of the very important stakeholders. So I think encouraging them some more, supporting them with policies, uh, supporting them with incentives, you mm -hmm. know, is also very important. It's it's a social um, it's a social uh, process. Mm. Food fortification itself it has social imperatives. However. So for food processors to really go along with this social imperative, there has to be a business incentive for them because they are they are not in they are not development partners. They are not in need for the charity. They are in need for profit. Mm. And so, in as much as the government of the countries that are engendering qualification are trying to you know enforce it and all of that, it it doesn't hurt mm. to support this you know key stakeholders by making sure that their voices are heard. What are their challenges? So far, it's been supply chain challenges has been a whole lot of mm. issues. For instance, case in point in Nigeria, it takes weeks you oh. know, to clear um, imported constituents. Mm -hmm. So the premixes, which are the vitamin and mineral constituents that goes into this food table, is mostly imported into the country. There's no local capacity to produce them, per se. So even those local millers have to import all of the vitamin and mineral constituents. Every single one of them has to be imported. So that means there is the responsibility of those that are in charge mm -hmm. of trade to make sure that that node in that chain is made easy, is made accessible, is made very effective and efficient because those vitamin and mineral constituents are, it's a complex matrix of chemicals mm. that interact with each other, you know, and are affected adversely by environmental conditions like heat, like moisture, like temperature. Mm. So the, the, the more efficient the supply chain system or distribution system is, the better the quality that goes into this food that that will then support the the end purpose, which is that the final consumer gets the, that investment in his blood streams, right? Mm -hmm. It's the end in mind. If we put the end in mind, which is to get the iron, the vitamin A, and so on and so forth into the bloodstream of the consumers, mm -hmm. then we have to make sure that that distribution chain is extremely efficient. Mm -hmm. And that is where the government comes in with infrastructure. With the with with the legislations, with the policies, with the incentives. So, I think that is something that we need to now you know focus a whole lot of the technology, the digitization of mm. processes. It's it's really important at this point. Yeah, that was actually my next question. Uh, it is like more of an expansion from the previous uh, ones. 
that we have talked about the issues, but what are the possible opportunities that can be tapped into to improve this fortification landscape? For example, are there some aspects that have worked really well before and maybe we can, you know, continue to potentially tap into those areas to further improve things? Yeah, so on that ACPF project, um, we were we had what we called uh, that Stekusa was able to um, order, coordinate the private sector and the government in what was named the National Nutrition Leadership Forum, or more specifically the CEO Forum, which convened the C level executives of the private sector, all the producers of the staples in Nigeria, edible oil, uh, we flour sugar, and now hopefully we will begin to include rice in the conversation. But now the CEO forum uh, now sort of uh, taxed Technoser to look for a self-regulatory mechanism, a peer review mechanism mm-hmm. that will further, you know, drive corporate governance mm-hmm. in this co- in this companies to ensure that. Um, the private sector reports on indices such as food fortification compliance in the annual report. That is taking this now from the traditional regulatory enforcement uh, uh, space to something that is business uh, operation oriented, that is self-regulatory, that is voluntary, Mm -hmm. and tap on the competitive nature of businesses. We know businesses are highly competitive. Mm-hmm. So we will, uh, Tecosab then um, created the index, the what we call the micro fortification index. Mm-hmm. Now, this fortification index um, is locally driven, is industry-owned, and essentially it helps to generate data and publicly share this data with the index Ranking participating companies mm-hmm. on an annual basis demos- that demonstrates their commitment to meeting national compliance. Now, we all know that, you know, for an index to thrive, everybody wants to be at the top of the, of the rank, right? It means they have to, their business processes have to be better, they have to be more committed to compliance and all of that. So, what we've noticed is, I mean, because we do a periodic product quality testing. Mm-hmm. And we report the results, you know, to this company. And what we and then at the end of every year, they have to come to this forum, and the top performing brands and companies have to receive awards. Mm-hmm. So, uh, from our observations of just this practice within the last two years, we've seen that competitive nature really start to, you know, uh, amplify the commitments to qualification compliance. Those that won the previous year are calling us like, hey, what's going on? What did I do wrong? Where did I get extra? Nice. So, I get you know, so it's really encouraging. And they also want to, the, it, now the, 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 the advocacy is that, okay, how can this MFI now start to drive their consumers to their products? Mm-hmm. How can it then start to you know, drive consumer demand? That means awareness and communication like when you see a company performing hey it means you should buy their product so that level of uh, enthusiasm mm-hmm. to for qualification for the first time ever because i've been in this field for like all of my career years it's really the most exciting thing that has happened mm-hmm. that i've witnessed so i think that initiative needs to be scaled up mm. You know, it needs to be skilled. The awareness has to be driven so that, uh, because it's on a voluntary basis. So there are some companies now, some brands that are not even participating in this. So I believe that this initiative should be endorsed by other, from the highest levels in the country. Government, private sector, consumer advocacy group. I think they need to really endorse this initiative because it is going to be a real game changer in driving, uh, the, the success and what we want, that goal that we've always had hmm. for that skill. Yeah. Great. So mm, you have said in one of your uh, posts on LinkedIn, and I quote here, that food fortification in Nigeria is 
20 years old, mature industry raised by a village of government agencies, development partners, and nurtured by the private sector producers. However, this child is yet to realize its full potential in order to contribute significantly to the community. So how do you see the future of fortification and what is your wish list on the matter? If you could like wish for just two or three things in this context, what would that be? Ah. In future. <laughs> yeah, if I, if, I, if I have a wish, yeah, magic wand, I would like to see, and this is not just uh, because uh, I am part of the MFI you know, team, but like I said earlier, just earlier on, I, I would like to see the MFI or the index, I'd like to see it go global. Mm. You know, where companies are actually vying for membership to participate so that their brands are visible. So that their commitment and their investment is visible and it can attract not just consumers, but it can attract social investors to their business. You know, it can attract uh, recognition and awards more to their business. Uh, because yes, there is a lot of social imperative in food fortification, mm -hmm. but we need to make that, we need to privatize that social environment, we need to privatize it. Uh -huh. It needs to be commercialized such that businesses actually see mm -hmm. the, not just the, see the profits, but they also see the impact of what they're doing, of their investment in the health sector, in the growth and development of the community they see, because there's a direct link between food fortification uh, malnutrition and economic development. So being able to be part of that big vision mm -hmm. is what the MFI will drive. And for me, I have just one wish mm -hmm. is to see MFI evolve globally into the last open fortification space. Great. Thank you so much, Ayo, for giving us the time. Your insights were uh, great and very helpful for the um, people who are working in this area. It's my pleasure, right? Uh, whatever contribution, I can continue to make uh, to the drive this vision of bringing food to the whether it's heating or obvious or that. I'm very happy to do that anytime. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. At BioAnalyst, we believe that the knowledge about the nutrients in our food can be powerful. And it all starts with measurement. We have developed rapid on-the-spot micronutrient testing solutions at a fraction of a cost it takes with typical laboratory methods. For more details and information about the solutions we provide, visit our website at www.bioanalyst.com.